Let's talk about remote work and how much more difficult is it for these companies, big or small, to ensure that their information is safe when people are working from home, sometimes on a home network, which is who knows how secure or how to how to secure a VPN and make sure that's more secure. And with the idea of people coming in hybrid now, I do three, three days at home, two days in the office. That's just like, for cybersecurity, that can be like literally the worst of both worlds. Now you got to pay for both. How has remote work affected the cybersecurity space in a positive or negative light? It has, I wouldn't say positive or negative, but it has expanded the scope of flexibility and more options for people to work. So now people that never thought that they, they're going to have a VPN infrastructure into their environment, now they have a VPN infrastructure. And the workers, in some cases, are more productive because they can focus. They don't have to deal with the office politics and water cooler you know, talk conversation. They, some people are introverts. They prefer to work in their little cubby hole and they sit at home in their PJ all day long. That's and me. they're happy. <laughs> and if you're happy, you're going to be productive. And they can play their music as loud as they want. You know, right. that, that's great. That and is great, people, but I'm, I'm talking more from a cybersecurity perspective, though, from the idea yeah, of like I, a I, company I, securing the data. Like, I totally agree with you. I love remote work, and it is more productive for a lot of people, myself included. But from a company running a, running a company in a cybersecurity perspective, how has remote work affected that? It's, it's, been, a, it's, been, a, it's been an ongoing challenge, and it mm-hmm. will continue to be an ongoing challenge based on how your infrastructure is designed. Mm-hmm. Okay, exactly. we 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 have him, we, we begin to see more of our clients going full cloud. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, they're using things like Office three sixty five. The uh, with the Office three sixty five is a one stop shop for most of them. Uh, and they can have voice over IP phone system that makes it look and sound like you're in the office. You can have it on your desktop. Uh, as a, uh, on the desktop, you can have it on your laptop, you can have an app on your phone. So it doesn't matter where you are. I travel a lot. It doesn't matter where I am. my phone rings on, it, you know, on my cell phone too. So it, it makes you more agile, but it depends on your MSP or whoever design, design your infrastructure for you. So the strength of your cybersecurity, it's upon who is designing for you how experienced are they and how flexible do they want to make sure that you you have the flexibility to do what you need to do. Users don't care about security. They just want to get their work done. Right. But it's, yeah. And uh, for cybersecurity, we need to have tools in place that are automated to do things for us instead of manually watch, you know, looking at, over our shoulder to see if things are working right. Those tools will send alerts to us proactively. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. And you need to be able to respond adequately. Mm. So like, really, it's just got to shift the policy, right? Like another theme of this is making sure you have the policies in place. So if you were if you were an in person office and now post COVID you are a more hybrid remote, what like how how much did they have to change their policy in terms of fighting cybersecurity, or is it kind of just you know not that hard of a transition? It's the employee, you know, computer use policy is the first thing to get started with. And it's to be expanded. It's not about working remotely. Where are you working remotely? In country, out of country? Is the country going to be an ally or not an ally, friend, friend or foe, that kind of stuff? So you need to incorporate that in there as part of your you know, infrastructure. Uh, sometimes you want to be able to monitor the activities of the employees, right? You have manic time, you know, uh, for example, you can put it in there. And you can see what they're doing and how they're doing. It's not because you want to be a big brother. You want to get it better. You have to have enough data of what your end users are doing and how they're doing it. If you don't do that, then you don't know who you're servicing. You need to know your client. Okay. KYC. Because your users are now your clients. If not, if they, if they are not your client, they're going to be the client of the bad actors. <laughs> The bad actors call them client. Are you going to be the client of the bad actors? So make sure you know your users. Understand what their pain points are. They're going to push back. I just want this. I just want this. But what is good for the company? And yeah. that's what you have. It's a con- continuous conversation, continuous evaluation of your cybersecurity and posture all the time. You cannot sit back. 
because the bad actors, they're they striking every time and hoping, hope, they're hoping one day you're going to look and open the door and let them in. So when you look at the definition of uh, insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expect something, a different outcome. But that's mm-hmm. what the bad actors do. They do the same thing over and over. And if you let go, <laughs> something else is going to happen and they, they get that win. 